Approximately three years ago, I took $30,000 of my life savings and without a loan invested in the company with the dream of establishing an institution in Idaho that could make my wonderful but very disabled children, Bryce and Carter Summer, smile and live a better life. I worked nearly round the clock to build this business with my two hands and did not take a paycheck for 10 months, investing every penny I had into this dream for my family. It worked. Seasons of Hope, a company based on heart, soul, science, and sacrifice, not only immediately had a positive effect on my sons, but also on hundreds of other persons suffering from disability across the southeastern corner of our home state of Idaho. But like every good act of good, there will always be others who seek to destroy it. But one does not suspect that such obstacles will come from old friends. From the beginning, numerous people within the Medicaid Department of Health and Welfare appeared to complain openly regarding Seasons of Hope, even prior to our opening our doors. As we filed our first credentialing certificates, we received multiple denials for poorly addressed reasons. Finally, when we did get approval to become an agency, we had special burdensome requirements put upon our agency, not required by law or applied to other agencies. Time and again, we would have to appeal to the highest levels of authorities to overcome such obstacles. When we opened our doors, it was also during the times where health and welfare could not pay the bills. And like so many other Idaho businesses serving the public, we spent months and in many cases even years waiting for the payment from the state, which now owes us well over $100,000. After writing a news article over a year ago criticizing government cuts to, to, to the disabled, I was told by several friends from my days with the department that there were those who did not like what I had to say. I have never been a conspiracy theorist and choose to move forward with life trusting our public institutions to be trustworthy. However, something about this investigation just doesn't seem right. Our patients were informed before we were that we were shut down. The date the department chose to deliver the letter happened to be a Saturday, a date our company was closed. This meant that it would not be until Monday that we would be informed about our allegations, leaving us with four less of our 28 days to respond to 18 months of investigation we were largely unaware of. We were told we would have the chance to review the allegations made against us and respond prior to any action being taken place. In fact, the vast majority of items we were given in this process we had never heard of nor seen before. We were told that the government had to shut us down with the department citing federal law that upon review to us, appears to leave some discretion to the department. Within 48 hours of being shut down, we received notification from the department complaining that despite our being shut down and having no clerical staff and having to move patient information from seven now vacated offices, that there was complaint and concern we were not sending information fast enough to transition patients. As we have reviewed the letter sent to us alleging fraud, we cannot help but to notice that there is time and time again where we find there are many unusual errors, wherein the letter appears to say something very inflammatory, yet there is not a correlated citation we can find in the 160 pages of citations to correspond with the inflammatory language of the letter. The letter citing what are easily explained as clerical errors in billing or service provision. We are now two days from the deadline for turning in our response to the 14 page later letter of allegations and received notification today that our request for records, such as emails and other important documents that we believe will be key in showing potential bias against our agency from the department, is being fully denied. Not only is this request being denied, but the department who had promised to deliver the, the, but the department who had promised to deliver them in 10 business days, approximately two weeks ago waited until virtually the last hour to tell us they would not be delivering the request. However, the department was willing to release their 14-page letter alleging fraud and, bes and besmirching my reputation almost instantly to the World Wide Web and media outlets. I have and always will maintain that the department has a right to investigation, including investigation of Seasons of Hope. I had been a civil servant with the department from 2002 to 2010. Working my way up from being an intern to a ranking manager in the southeastern region. There are many wonderful and hardworking members of the department, but wrong is wrong. 
To deny us due process in knowing beforehand the allegations was wrong. To deny us due process by preemptively shutting our business down was wrong. And to deny us records key and critical to our defense is wrong and a violation of our constitutional rights. Like our fellow Idaho citizenry, we are Americans. Our reputation has been besmirched. Our employees have suffered. Our patients have suffered. My family, my disabled children and their siblings have suffered greatly. We face endless debt and understandably frustrated employees looking to us for answers. We do not deny the department's right to conduct an investigation, but we ask for it to be fair. We are now little trying to make our defense against a vast organization full of attorneys in power. We do not ask to be exempt from the system, but to be a part of it. We call on local and state community and civic leaders to partner with us to allow us our basic constitutional right to a fair and speedy hearing and to government records which are supposed to be open and transparent. No games or gimmicks attached. Thank you.